Welcome to Afros in the Diaspora. My name is Sarah. I am your host. And together we will vent, rant, laugh, and cry as we discuss the highs and lows of being an immigrant. Stay tuned for stories that will inspire, inform, entertain, and give hope. This is Afros in the Diaspora. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Afros in the Diaspora. Today, we have Miss Adetola Adedikwe, a.k.a. Poetic Designer. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. I love the way you just, you threw the accent. You put the accent on my name properly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm excited for this. I'm very excited to be here. And yeah, just, you know, to talk about the things. You know? Let's talk about the things. Exactly. Um, all right. So let's start with our icebreakers. I have two for you. Um, and I'm going to start with the South African one. So how many official languages does South Africa have and what are they? 11, but then the South African sign language was added to the roster. So that's one. Yeah. English, Afrikaans, Zulu. Kwasa, Speri, Sesutu. Setswana, Siswati, Chivenda, Tonga, Indibele. Yay! I think you got it. Plus the and then sign language. Sign language. Yeah. Yo, that's a, that's a hard thing to be asking people. <laughs> <laughs> not, you can't just go around asking about the 11 official languages. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's get to the second one. The second, okay. mm, the second question. This is not an icebreaker. This is trivia. This, yeah. I mean, you know what? It's trivia icebreaker. You can call it that. <laughs> I've been asking in some of the other episodes. I've asked some Nigerians to say the states and capitals, and it has been hilarious. <laughs> Just no. You can't do that. You can't do that I one. <laughs> Okay, let me see. Let me find. I'm. I'm gonna ask you a a riddle. Pretty easy. Pretty okay. easy riddle. Um. So when I point up, mm-hmm. it's bright. When I point mm-hmm. down, it's dark. What am I? When I point up, it's bright. When I point down, it's dark. Yeah. What am I? It's super easy. This is like very easy. A light switch. Oh, there it is. It is a light switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank god i'm like i'm 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 university educated I, I... <laughs> oh my god it is a light oh. switch it is a light switch you got it <laughs> yeah i was like i, I don't even know anymore yeah it's, oh my gosh yeah where, where are you finding these questions i mean you know they're out there <laughs> they are out there i grew up listening to like riddles with my cousins like they would oh. yeah 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 especially like with the older cousins so like they'll try to trip you up and say hmm in the morning i have two i have four legs in the afternoon i have two legs in the evening i have three legs what am i and then there's usually some prize or something uh you know attached to it like you get a piece of candy or something like that yo if there's one thing nigerians will do they'll test each other yeah physics chemistry just, riddles yeah just test <laughs> each other but let me throw this let me throw this extra one in there what are some african mom sayings that you can recall <sighs> the first one that just is a univer- universal african mom language is put it on my head wow. mommy where should i put yeah. this thing on my head Sarah. just put it on my head <laughs> so you're gonna get us in trouble with this <laughs> we're we'll gonna get in trouble if our parents find this book <laughs> I think I think for me the one is I mean besides all the you know the threats in your bar mm-hmm. um let's see there's I mean there's the one you know I brought you into this world oh my gosh and, and I, will I will take, take you, you right out <laughs> and also there's the one where they just say you know a simple simple instruction mm-hmm. you can't listen to simple instruction simple instruction I'm like, yeah I'm like it was so vague. <laughs> <laughs> Your instructions were vague. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. That's why I'm asking question. for clarification. Or, and then they'll say, "Put it on my head." On my head. Or, or it's like I'm asking. I if don't... I don't ask, then you're gonna tell me I didn't ask. What do you want me to do? Exactly. Or if they, or if you, if they send you to look for something and you can't find it, I say, "If I if go back, if I there, go back there, I find it, <laughs> and I find it." 
wow yeah and she's like it's funny because sometimes it happens with uh, my sister like my sister like i'll tell my sister something or even like in reverse or she'll tell me to go look for something and i'll go i can't find it or she can't find it i'll be like dude if i go there <laughs> and i find it what are you gonna give me because yeah. <laughs> if i go there because it happens you know yeah Oh my gosh. And the thing is, like, if your mom does go back and she does find it, like, for me on my side, I kind of look at that thing. You know the thing I'm supposed to find? Mm -hmm. I kind of look at it. I'm like, why are you embarrassing me? <laughs> like, why did you have to choose to embarrass me in front of my mother? Where were you? Where were Where you? Where have you been? Exactly. Where have you been when I was looking for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Um, There are a few more. I feel like, yeah, that I brought you to this world. I can take you out. There's that's a there's a level of anger yeah. that your mom has to get to yeah. to say that she's gonna take you away to, from the world to, to be activated in that way. Because if you think about it, isn't that that's just you know that that's kind of like murder. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, is this an assassination? Am I am I on your hit list? What is going on? Like, what? Like, why would you say that to me? It's like, don't you love me, mom, mommy? Or if you, if you, you know, if you go to school and, you know, at the end of the term when your report card comes out and then you didn't, you made the mistake of not coming first in class. So then the person that came yeah. first, do they have two heads? Do they have two heads? Do they have, <laughs> <laughs> do they have two heads? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I always was thinking to myself, like, what if they do? What if they do have two heads? <laughs> well, and they don't want to get any explanation, any English. No, no, no. You know? Because you, what's the difference between you and that person that came first? Exactly. Do they have. I'm just like, you know, like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. But then they'll tell me how they always came first in school. But the thing is, everyone else's parents also tell me how they came first in school. It's like, I said, so that all of you, somebody's lying. Yeah. Because not all of you came first in school. You all went to the same school. Yeah. Don't lie to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. You need to go to your friends and ask them if they also came first in school. Your schoolmates. And then you fight, fight about who was actually first in school. Because we don't have every, any evidence. There's not evidence that you came first to school, actually. And exactly. And, like, figure it out. And then you got, you kind of agree that, okay, I came first. They came second. <laughs> exactly. Let there be a universal story. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's, like, it's so wild because, like, I know, like, I know my parents were just so, so I mean, I guess all of our parents were just, like, so so hardworking mm. and so studious mm -hmm. that like it didn't even matter like sometimes i would even get like a hundred percent you know if i got a hundred percent on a test of course they're like oh my gosh love you do you want a present mm -hmm. like we're gonna mm -hmm. get you something mm -hmm. and then as soon as you don't do as well it's almost like you're a different person that actually got the hundred percent the first time yeah. it's like i'm still the same person so if you thought i was smart then why am i suddenly not smart now Maybe I was having maybe I was having a hard time. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to hear that. So I'm like, How many bills are you paying? <laughs> what is a hard time to you? <laughs> do you do you pay food? Do you pay for all this house? Your only job is to study. It's to study exactly. I'm like, I'm like, but I'm also trying to live, mom and dad. <laughs> help me. <laughs> like, wait. you brought you brought us, you you immigrated so we can have a better life. Mm -hmm. So let me have that better life. Let please. me try. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh my gosh, no, but I respect, I respect them so much. Oh, parents. of course. Like, they're so, yeah, they're so inspiring. When I think of, like, how much they had to, like, you know, raise themselves because our parents were busy living in, like, post-colonial Nigeria with uh, all these yeah. government officials that are misusing all the money and oh resources. Oh my gosh, let's, not, so let's like, not even go into the, let's <laughs> yeah, not go into the exactly. government, please. That's a I whole, know, so it's like, yeah. Exactly, so it's like all this, like, I mean, you know how they talk about how Nigerians are, like, all over the world and stuff and, you know, some of how, you know, the hardest work workers in the world and all that kind of stuff it's like yo we had the, our parents just they had to like they had to leave and you know prosper in other places mm -hmm. ah part of me sometimes is just like i wish Nigeria was a better place so we all could have just stayed there just stayed there. Lives, i know, you know? Ha, god help us <laughs> 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 we'll get there nigeria will get there someday but um yeah, yeah thank you thank you for indulging with me with these with these questions um Thank you for quizzing me. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're my, welcome. My brain is working now. My one brain, it's 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 activated. Yes, it's I'm activated. glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, let's let's get into your immigrant story. If you just, you know, tell us a little bit about mm. your story of, you know, how, when you moved here, if you moved by yourself, with your family, just so that we have a, a an idea. 
Uh, cool. Um, so uh, my dad started the immigration process. So he, you know, usually the way it goes, like some person goes there first and then works and then uh, applies for their family to get like PR. And then um, when I was in my first year of university in South Africa, yeah, I was I was there and then my parents said, you know, pack your stuff, we're going. And so it was like, okay. So because what happened was we did visit my dad once the year before, like, hmm? two years before, one year before, um, you know, for holiday. And then while we were there, they were like, because I was in grade 12. Yeah, I was in grade 12 at the time. And then they were like, oh, you should, you know, apply for some, you know, Canadian universities. You never know if you get in. And so in my head, I'm like, oh, it'd be fun to like go to university in Canada and then, you know, come back, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just like another option. And then I didn't like hear back or anything. And of course, I already got into university. So by the time I was like in there, and of course the timelines are different because university in South Africa starts in January. So I was already in university, but then in Canada, you don't hear until like the July mm -hmm. or like the August. Yeah. So I was like living my best life. And then my parents were like, we're moving. I was like, <laughs> I <didn't> think, what? <laughs> because I was like, yeah, I got like I got into University of Calgary, but it didn't matter to me because I was already in university. I was like, man, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and my parents were just like, we're moving, and so like it was like a whole. It was a whole. It was kind of like a nightmare because in the end, it's like I had all this like life like plan for myself, and now my parents are saying like we're moving, and of course like I'm you know I'm nineteen. <laughs> 20 and you know i don't have any money you know because in south africa it's like you um because of the way like the school year is also set up like it's not it's not common to work through school because there is no time to like you know get and have like a part-time job during school um we have like more frequent breaks we have more frequent but shorter breaks mm -hmm. so it's like the longest break we have is in december which is like a month ish um so, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like in a place to just like be independent by myself. So, cause I had to go when my family was going, um, my sister was still in high school. So she still had to finish. So it was just me and my older brother that had to go. And then we went with my mom and my dad was in Canada and then, yeah. And then I had to like, but I, I applied to every, <laughs> my parents got a house in Regina. So I applied for every single school that was not in Saskatchewan <laughs> because I wanted to not be where they were. Right. Um, because I was so angry, right? So I was just like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the one that's you know furthest, for, far enough that I can, I have to stay on the residence by myself. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I was like, even though I didn't want to do this, um, I will do it my way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then yeah, and that's it. And then I basically had to just you know pivot and adapt. You know when I did, I didn't. It wasn't my choice in the end. So mm. that was kind of painful. So I had to like leave my friends. I had to leave my boyfriend at the time. Um, yeah, it was it was like a it was like a hard thing because they they were like my support system. They, I mean, they were like my friends. We like raised each other and all that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that was that was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Oh, so what was school like yeah. then when you moved here? Um, I so I I didn't go to um orientation because I wanted to stay at home longer, so I skipped orientation completely. And so by the time I got there, like school started in like two days from then. So I like got there, I got like my student card, and I moved in, and then my mom and my brother left, <laughs> and then it was just me. I was just, I was just there like by myself. I didn't know anybody. Everyone else like knew each other already. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the layout of the university. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't know anything. Um, one of my friends that I made in university, she came even later than me, and she was just like, she just had to like drop her stuff and like go. Um, so it's it's very disorientating. So if you <clears throat> if you end up just coming by yourself, so I had to just you know I met my roommate. She was from Zimbabwe. Uh, we were like the only two black people like on the floor. Maybe like one of like two of maybe five people five black people in the building <laughs> i wow. don't know i think there's only like one other black person that i can remember that was in our building mm. and that's it and then everyone else was just like you know these people but she she grew up here so she was like more like you know integrated in the canadian culture whatever that is really i'm still trying to figure that out <laughs> um <laughs> and so yeah i was just kind of like 
alone mm. <laughs> yeah i did try to make some friends um but then uh, there was like a whole thing that broke out and then they stopped being my friends um i ended up you know kind of um just integrating myself with the people that i met through my faculty mm-hmm. and then i went on like a camp like a faculty camp like that first weekend again i didn't know anybody and they all went to like you know like the faculty orientation like they all met each other at orientation so i literally didn't know anybody mm-hmm. uh, but yeah but some of them are still my friends to today so oh, that's awesome pretty, pretty good yeah. yeah first of all actually if we can go back a little bit your name is aditola mm-hmm. adidikbe but you're south mm-hmm. african can you just clarify because i know folks who have questions oh oh yeah. yeah so my parents are nigerian like like ethnically mm-hmm. i'm nigerian i'm yoruba mm-hmm. and i was but i was born and raised in south africa mm. so yeah so like i mean still culturally i'm nigerian but like you know culturally south african nationality is my is south african mm-hmm. um yeah so i grew up like as a south african but of course there's other nigerians in south africa as mm-hmm. well so i had like both of that like together yeah. so like while being in south african i was never like I never, you know, stopped being or like I don't identify with being Nigerian. So that's why I think is like so great about places like South Africa is like you don't forget like where you're from mm-hmm. um, versus, sorry to the Canadian audience, like people who are in Canada here. And because I can, it's because it's, I, I feel similar to like, let's say you're like a settler in Canada and you feel like, oh, I'm Canadian, I'm not European. It's like, but you are, <laughs> but you are. Um, so, you know like so having that identity of like your your family like where your family's from yeah. and where you've been born and raised like it's fine to understand it's fine to love where you've been born and raised but you also need to acknowledge mm-hmm. your roots yep. and i think that's like a like a cultural difference between like being south african and being you know canadian yeah speaking of cultural differences actually i'm very curious what some like cultural shocks you experienced were my co- one of the cultural shocks is the is the okay so for like a lack of a better word but just like kind of like the the oh i don't want to call it patriotism is it patriotism because you can be patriotic but i don't know it's almost like a it's like patriotic but almost on like borderline denial <laughs> i don't know okay, denial. yeah yeah um yeah of just things like one of the main things is like the way that canadians handle conflicts you know, mm. it's kind of like more of an avoidant situation yeah. to the point where I was seen as very like, like I was seen as a confrontational person. And I never saw myself as a confrontational person mm-hmm. until I was told, yeah, that I was confrontational. I was like, no, we had a conversation. You said something that, you know, hurt my feelings or whatever. Let's talk about it so we can deal with it and move on. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I was treated as, you know, like kind of like a you know, you end up being, you know, like the angry black woman. Mm-hmm. And I was like, guys, we were just having a conversation, you know, yeah. in like my culture in South Africa. If if you have a situation, you need to talk about it so we can squash it move and move on. Yeah, so I think like the, the communication was a big like culture shock for me because it seemed like no one really wanted to just talk about hard topics. Mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, back home, we don't have a choice. We always mm-hmm. have to talk about hard topics. The hard yep. topics are everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, I just found it, I found it very hard to talk to people openly and honestly. Yeah. Because everyone just seemed to want to talk about things like Tinder. <laughs> the, like, weather. <laughs> the weather. The weather. The weather. The thing is, I find, my, I find myself doing it now as well because I don't have anything else to talk about. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh my gosh, you think it'll snow today? Yeah. Oh, wow, we got so much sun today. Because I don't know what I, you, you know, it's okay because it's, 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 it's funny that it feels like there's, like there's nothing, because you, because bringing up, bringing up politics, mm-hmm. that's, that's rough you can't just you yeah. can't just bring up politics yep. you can't just bring up religion mm-hmm. you can't just bring up you know the government yeah <laughs> you, you know um you, and you and you see you also just can't bring up things like you know like race or talk about the lgbtq community because oh yeah you cannot because even though i feel like canada has this like image of being this like wonderful utopia like place like the people itself within it like if you bring up certain topics mm-hmm. <laughs> forget about it you probably won't have a very good conversation i agree like you wouldn't yeah. be able to have just like a like a good back and forth mm-hmm. you know it's just like the, yeah that that lack of back and forth it's 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 so it's so hard to have because i feel like they don't usually have these discussions off it you yeah. know and people like you and me we're used to like okay let's go <laughs> i mean like <laughs> i i had that issue you know? when i moved here as mm-hmm, well like mm-hmm. um 
I would because I was in the theater departments, right? So you have to collaborate mm-hmm. a lot with you know a whole yes. lot of people. But like I just had weird situations with communication where a woman with a very very thick, um um what accent was this Russian accent or um okay or just one of, like an accent from that part of the world. Um, and she told me, I came in there, it was my first semester there, I was still very much speaking like this, I was like, oh, hi, I just want to, like, just my normal Nigerian accent, you know, um, and she's like, yeah, we don't do accents here, sorry, in a thick accent, she said to me, we don't do Stop. accent accents here, and I'm like, bro, in you my head, in my head, I'm like, this person is an immigrant just like me, that's not, you can't even dispute that, first of all, even though it's from a, a white or European place, you're an immigrant nonetheless. But with her thick accent, she would say, "We don't do accents here." Sorry, she said it with and like she with her own chat, like with very with all the boldness and and confidence in the world, we don't do accents here. And I'm like, bro, and, and, and <laughs> I did like at that point, like advocating for myself wasn't a thing yet. I was just kind of still right. like freaking figuring right. things out and navigating life in this new space that I found myself. And like mm-hmm. I think a couple, like after a few, uh, a couple semesters or so, a colleague of mine said you're mm. mean and i'm like wait what she called you mean yeah he called me mean and i'm like what do you mean and it's like you you just like like direct i'm like okay I'm like, yeah yeah i i am direct <laughs> that's you know that's that's the way i speak he's like yeah but like it's just seen as mean and it's i i i'm telling you i i shut down restarted rebooted for like yeah. five minutes i just sat staring and thinking like wait what so mm-hmm. being direct in this society is is, is, is being, being mean, mean. is being because I feel like we exactly because we do understand the difference between between you know like you know how you say something, but literally any kind of directness is taken as it's being taken as, as being mean, being angry. Being, yeah, and and the, I'm still honestly digesting and learning every day how to me as well how to communicate here because I had to when he said that to me, I stopped talking for a bit and just started to listen yes. more. Yes. Um. Like I just listened to exactly how people were speaking and how people were offering mm-hmm. like criticism or um mm-hmm. you know how people would make comments and things like that. Where mm-hmm. in Nigeria, if I ask for a pink skirt and you make me blue shorts, I will tell you, well, this is not what I asked for. Are you still like, where is the pink skirt I asked for? This is not what like, are, is it being made? Like I need, you know, just assertively just say, mm-hmm. yo, I, we need this on this day. Like, is mm-hmm. this still going to be made? Blah, blah, blah. Like, mm-hmm. but here, the, apparently the way that they speak is oh that's a really lovely blue shorts you made that's really nice it must have taken some time blah, 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 and kind of give them the pat on the mm-hmm. back first, mm-hmm. first and, just, yeah. and then you can shimmy around the well um i still do need that pink skirt do you know when you'll be able to get around to make like you're now massaging around the topic as opposed massage, to yeah. as opposed to like mm-hmm. as opposed to coming <laughs> at it and just saying uh this is not what i asked for where is what i asked for you know what i mean yeah um and here there's the whole uh what is it called the, the something sandwich the compliment sandwich where there's a compliment yeah, exactly. there's a compliment First. before and then you give yeah. the criticism or the point you're trying to make and then there's a compliment yes, and then a compliment after, after. And yeah. I I just am like, what the heck? I've noticed that what a lot. I know I noticed that a lot more with women than men in the even in the society. Like even in emails, like where a person will be like, "Hey, yeah. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to, you know, check in about you know these shorts. Are they ready yet? Please let me know. Let me know if you need any help or I have any questions. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Let me know. And a mat like a male would send that email like, "Hey, Sarah." The, the blue shorts that were requested last week are they ready yet please let me know best mm-hmm. like they, they just very direct straight to the point you know um and, and it, that's just a different that i i have observed and i continue to observe like there are very very few you know males who will send an email and are like you know hey how are you doing hope all is well with you just trying to check in mm-hmm. about i i have found that like mm-hmm. that is not as common as women Mm -hmm. when they send those messages so that has been an Mm -hmm. interesting thing too that i i observe and i'm like well i gotta find the middle ground because i cannot be dancing all around the forest to get to a point right like i get it Mm -hmm. i've i've been direct with the person before who just broke down and started crying so like 
it's it's an interesting thing I had to learn and I feel like I'm still learning. Like it certainly was a cultural mm-hmm. shock for me. I definitely agree with you. Yeah, communication style is so important. I think as well, like when you're trying to make, you know, whether it's in the workplace or you're trying to make friends, um, because I like I said before, I had there was these two friends that I had that weren't in my faculty before mm-hmm. and there was there was like an altercation with like a a man who was also like in our building. And they ended up misunderstanding a situation so badly that first they started ghosting me, hanging out without me. And then only when I reached out to ask them, did I do something, is when they decided to talk to me. So if I didn't say anything, if I wasn't direct, Mm -hmm. I would have just gone on being like, oh, these people are just actively hanging out without me. They would have just said nothing. (laughs) I was like, why would you do that to someone that you consider to be a friend? So I think that... For me, like you said, like how, you know, when you started talking less and like listening more, I think it, it for me as well, I started, I just started talking less in general. So like I wouldn't, you know, speak my mind. I wouldn't like say how I really feel. I wouldn't try to weigh in on things. Mm-hmm. I'll just kind of do, do as I was told and follow the, follow the curve. And also, like you said before, like what you said before, like how you, at that time, you didn't know how to like stand up for yourself yet Mm -hmm. so you also have to like learn as you're here as an immigrant you have Mm -hmm. to learn how to stand up for yourself Mm -hmm. you have to relearn how to love yourself as a Mm -hmm. black person (laughs) because now you've gone from a place that everyone looks like you everyone communicates like you Mm -hmm. to now this place where you feel ultimately just like alone and rejected Mm -hmm. and you don't know how to talk to anybody and you're afraid to talk to people because you don't want the backlash yeah, because now suddenly you're the person that oh don't go don't go talk to sarah she's gonna make you cry oh <laughs> like <my God>. <laughs> or like answering a question with no was a we like it was a it was a whoa mm-hmm. you just you just said the n-word <laughs> like I, like i noticed i'll be in production meetings and um you know hey sarah do you have any like anything to add any questions no mm-hmm. I just say no and yeah, exactly, let exactly. the meeting continue. But you hear there's that awkward pause after I say no that they're mm-hmm. like, uh, is, is that it? It's crazy because I wasn't I wasn't out here just being mean and rude to people. Exactly. No, I just was talking my Nigerian way, very direct. If you have a question to ask, you're not asking how someone's day was, how someone's mm-hmm. night was. You're not like, mm-hmm. oh, how are the kids? How are the this thing? Oh, by the way, how is before you ask your question? No. Like if I have a question about that, <laughs> if I have, you know, if I have a question to ask someone, I'll just say, hey, good morning. Were you able to look at that email? Like I just would give it like yes. just ask the I'd question. Ask the question. Uh-huh. but apparently mm-hmm. you can't do that you have to say hello and hi <laughs> and greet the, and ask about people's nights how they slept the weather everything before you stumble onto the point you're trying to make or the question you're trying to ask yeah it's hard to yeah it's hard to gauge like whether it's like in an educational setting whether it's like in a work setting yeah or just like with your friends now i also felt like i had to become like a different version of myself Ooh. which is like I mean, back in back home in South Africa, like I kind of had that because you know I'm so, I was like you know South African and then Nigerian, but that was like that was something similar to like you know how you act with your parents versus how you act with your friends. friends. So yeah. it wasn't like everyone else was everyone was doing that. We all, yeah, we all yeah, know yeah, the difference, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. What's like. Yeah. Um, but here, it's like I literally had to be a different person, so I wouldn't have to deal with all these things that are happening around me because now suddenly I'm the only black person in all these in all these groups. I'm the only like black immigrants or I'm the only immigrants in all these like situations um and I was just like it was just so rough especially like within like my faculty so like there were like other I noticed like as I was in university like more black people were like around me Mm -hmm. um but it was at the at the beginning it was like I was the only black person I knew in my faculty and then there was one class I knew there was this other one um black person um he was in nursing though but he wasn't in my faculty he just happened to be in the same class as me but in Mm. that class it was just me and him Mm. (laughs) just me and him and i was like what is happening right now and so it's like you know it's like it's like navigating all these conversations now as a new immigrant as a black person as a african Mm -hmm. as a black african woman yeah it's it's like i (laughs) it's like i don't know where to be and of course you're gonna try and find you know spaces you know with your people but like we were all like so spaced out and sporadic Mm -hmm. you don't really see you don't really see like on campus you didn't really see like lots of um groups of black people hanging out yeah you know until like much much later when um like more like cultural groups were like, coming out you know like the nigerian student association at the ufc mm-hmm. um and then um 
the African Caribbean Student Association, which I started with my sister and some of our friends as well. Oh, you started um, it? Yeah, me and my sister. Oh, yeah, okay, friends, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because we were there when, I think it was in my second, it was in my hmm, second, yeah, there was a club on campus called Afro, I believe. I think that's what they were trying to do, but there was one event that they had, like literally one event at the den called Afro Den. And I was so excited to go and it was like they, they, no one really showed up. Mm. And it was and then that was the only thing that happened. And so my sister came to me because her and her friend um were like, We wanna do something else, you know? And then she was like, Do you wanna like, you know, be the first, like, do you wanna like start this thing with us? And I was like, Hell yeah, yeah I wanna start let's this do with it. you. Yeah. Um yeah. So I was like the VP marketing for the for the for AXA for the first like two years and then we did like more events, we we like did more collaborations with, you know, the AXA at MRU, um, that kind of stuff. So it was mm-hmm. just like so when I look back now like at university and like, you know, AXA is still going, you know, with the NSA and the yeah. Eritrean Ethiopian Student mm-hmm. Association like all that stuff like all the things that they're doing together That's and like awesome. you know the African studies thing that happened with the faculty of arts like all the stuff like coming together it's like if I I wish that I had that at the beginning yeah. because then those are the those are the places I would have just been Yeah. because I even find myself now I still don't have as many like black friends mm-hmm. <laughs> which is like so rough and then but like it's I'm starting to because I'm also just starting to also just like try to um be more my be more myself yeah (laughs) which is funny because lots of people see me as like a confident person Mm -hmm. but i actually actually developed a lot of social anxiety after being here Mm -hmm. you know like i i used to not i used to you know i i leave places very early now i don't really talk to people when i go to like an event Mm -hmm. i get stressed (laughs) sometimes i just sit in a corner i you know arrive later just so i don't meet anyone going in and i yeah. leave early so i don't have to linger and talk to people afterwards um and it's like and i i didn't used to be like that like mm-hmm. ever and so when i think of it i'm just like when did this start happening and it all started when i started not being able to feel comfortable really talking out loud mm-hmm. like speaking the th- like saying the things that i want to say yep. like my truth mm-hmm. um so yeah it was just like a it's such a wild thing but i found so much comfort like in those events that we had with the with the african caribbean student association like those events that we had um and just being in the room with people that you know look like you that communicate like you yeah. and then when you think about it it's like when you think of you know i guess like white canadians they always have had that you do they always have that comfort mm-hmm. knowing that you will always be in a crowd with people that, are that just look like, like you. you unless yep. you go to our spaces yeah you will find people like you so it's like yeah. having imagine having to like go into that you know it's literally like if they were just to just you know throw themselves into africa <laughs> okay like that's the, that the comfort is what we don't have all the time yeah and because canada is seen as the as the more desi- desirable place to live there's like no reason for them to have to put themselves into In that, that discomfort. Yeah. We're always we always have to like invite people into our spaces. Like, oh, maybe let's maybe at the I used to work in the mall, so it's like maybe let me play some Afrobeats on the Spotify. Like, I'm mm-hmm. more I'm less comfortable playing my music in the store, even if it's my choice. Mm-hmm. If then they are to like you know I don't know play their country, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to make that extra step to like be included in a space because it's yeah. not for me you yeah, know? yeah yeah it's just kind of like trying to find your place within the space and create your space sometimes it, you, there's nothing to find because it's just not there and you just have to create your space within yeah, a space. and that's the thing exactly i think that's the burden that immigrants have like especially like you know i guess you know all of us here in the in the African diaspora, it's like yeah. we're always we always have to make the space because the space is not there. It does not exist. For us, yeah, you so know. You have to create and then it's seen it. as like exactly, and it's seen as like oh, did you start this thing or oh, this is like revolutionary and <laughs> the, you're the first and we've never had this before and it's just like well, sometimes we're tired of creating things, but like, yeah. sometimes we just want to go to a place and it's there for us really, you know. But I feel like we're the generation that has to like do that, start doing that like more and more and more because yeah. no one else is gonna do it for us clearly. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a hundred percent and um mm-hmm. i think oof that is true like in in not just like in school in life at work in mm-hmm, every, mm-hmm. like wherever you find yourself like mm-hmm. just it could be hard 
to kind of walk in the confidence of who you are, especially as an immigrant, when sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes like, this is not true for everyone, but sometimes mm-hmm. like, especially depending on how you move here, if it was not your like first choice to move here or, mm-hmm. you know, some people move here because of war, they're refugees and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Like they folks would rather rather much be at home and be making all these incredible changes and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the difference in their in their homes but i agree here, here they are you know circumstances and situations mm-hmm. have led them here and now they have to make the best of it so um what would you what would you because you are an artist and you are a poet and you are you know you're a spoken word artist you're you're please talk about talk about what you do and and <laughs> and and um I guess the journey to having your your parents come on board with that because I know the arts and some African parents don't exactly mix, you know. So like, what was that journey of um, acceptance or um, what was that? Talk about that a little bit. Um. So I'd always been like a, um, like I was saying before, like my parents would, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't not you know, praise me if I did something exceptionally well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I was seven, um, I actually won the the top student in literacy prize. Like I was seven, okay. Whoa. Based on like, you know, my stories and stuff. Okay. Like I wrote it was actually it was actually the story is a little hectic. It was about um we just had to write a story about our summer and uh-huh. in our summers it's rainy, right? So I wrote a story from the perspective of a raindrop that was born in the sky. And as it grows up, as it's falling, it's growing up. And, but also as it's approaching the ground, it's aging and seeing all its family perish, family friends perish until it eventually dies on the ground and its life ends. So like the life cycle of a raindrop from the perspective of a raindrop. I was like, when I look back on that story, I'm like, dang, (laughs) girl. Oh my God. (laughs) At seven? Yeah, dude. That and, like, is my awesome. Teacher, like, oh my god! And my teacher, she read it to everybody. Like they read it at the award ceremony. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is a, uh, it was so amazing. extra, you know. So I thought to myself, "That's you're so extra." And so, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I always enjoyed like writing and like poetry and stuff. Um, in my school, we used to have like a poetry festival where you had to like recite any like a piece of poem that that's already written um off by heart and for some reason I never actually got like a gold I always got a silver for that so I was never actually it seemed like I wasn't good at delivering poetry apparently so I actually just kind of like gave up on you know poetry in general I was like ah you know it's whatever wait 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 wait, wait, um, wait. I'm gonna have you pause so there are people that did not even win any awards but you won silver and you were like about to give it for up for the poetry festival yeah, yeah. I was like ah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> See now, that's the overachieving side of. I'm African just so confused. Women. That is the overachieving yeah. side. How can you win a silver and you're like, hey, I'm gonna give this up? That is. Yeah, because I wasn't getting gold. Like that's so annoying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna stop doing this poetry festival thing. I don't like this. Oh, man. Um, okay. But it's mandatory. So every year I read whatever poem, and every year I got a silver. I was just like. Guys, you're, you're, I can't do this anymore. You're not serious, first of all. <laughs> you're not serious. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. And I, even when I tried like to read like a short poem as well, to do it as so I could remember it as best as I could, mm-hmm. I was just never good with the delivery. I was like, okay. But the thing is, in my head, I was never thinking like, oh, people do this for a living, okay? Mm-hmm. So my dad, who is a brain surgeon, and my mom, you know, she's also in the medical field and all that stuff. Um you know, I was, the goal was to be a doctor, okay, as as everybody knows, that's the goal, that's, that's the goal. way that you put food on the table, that's mm-hmm. how you do it, okay, mm-hmm. um, and then, um, as I, like, grew up, and, you know, as I'm growing up, you know, you're a teenager now, so you have strict Nigerian parents, um, you, you know, you feel misunderstood, and all this stuff, and uh, I just found that poetry was my way to just, you know, communicate with the world, so I would write, like, I'd start like journaling as all poets start, you know, with their journals and stuff and stories and poetry. And then I would po- post it on Tumblr. <laughs> I'm just cringing. I'm just cringing on the inside. No. Uh, I posted on my Tumblr at the time. And then it was a very like angsty, like everything was in black and white and moody. And <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was a huge emo child. And then it was, it wasn't until I never like read that poetry to anybody. Um, and then it wasn't until literally like my last like month here in Canada when I was like 20 that 
um my boyfriend at the time he was into poetry and then he took me to a spoken word like open mic night and I it was called uh, Spoken Sessions in South Africa. Shout out. Mm-hmm. And I uh, we went there and then I saw these like, you know, these spoken word artists, you know, doing their thing. And I was, I like from that, mo- I was like obsessed. Like I didn't know that this was a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So at this point, you know, I didn't get into med school and I realized that I didn't want to go into med school because I was very relieved when I didn't get in. Mm-hmm. And so at this point, I was studying um, a triple major in... Um, Bio, um, bio sci um, it was genetics physiology and psychology because you know I didn't know what else to do so why not do <laughs> do a triple major majors man <laughs> yes. interesting yeah yeah it's not it's not it's not uncommon in um in South Africa school school in South Africa is harder than here people don't people don't know they don't know <laughs> school in, in in Africa we don't play dude we don't play with the universities no matter where in Africa you go yeah. I'm gonna say Africa because every way <laughs> university in africa is hard there's yeah. no you can't escape <laughs> none of this college what do they do <laughs> university um and so it was you know i you know that's what i was studying that's what i was working towards and of course now that i had to leave i had to um i applied to kinesiology because it was the closest thing to like sports science and had like the kind of things that i was already studying in there it was a, basically kinesiology was the closest thing to what I was studying so which is why I picked it mm-hmm. um and so now I'm sitting here I've listened to these like amazing artists you know do their thing yeah. and I was like I want to do this I just like I I didn't know at the time like oh I want to do this but I was like oh my gosh this is a thing that you can do mm-hmm. and so when they asked like who else wants who else has a poem and I was like I didn't put up my hand but my boyfriend put up my hand for me <laughs> and so I had to like so I just like pulled up I literally had to look up my Tumblr on my phone mm. <laughs> and then and then I just said my poem I just read it and then yeah and then afterwards you know like you know everyone was like you know giving me the you know the finger snaps mm-hmm. and they were talking to me about it afterwards and everyone like loved it and I also loved the feeling as well of sharing my poems and so I was like oh my gosh this is amazing but of course like as soon as I got here to Canada literally like a month later because that event was only once a month Mm -hmm. so I never got to go ever again Mm -hmm. um the you know I didn't I wasn't trying to focus I wasn't gonna suddenly like start like spewing my poetry to these people that I've never met and I don't know and I don't feel comfortable talking to I was like no Mm -hmm. you know so that wasn't like on the forefront of my mind um and then, but of course, like, as I'm here, as I was there in Canada and I'm having all these feelings, I'm just having, like, a bad time, um, all this stuff. And I was, you know, I, I I was, like, depressed and I developed all this social anxiety and just all this stuff. I, I, was, I was, like, writing while all of this was happening. And then one, my roommate, um, before she had to move out, the she took me to a the University of Calgary Spoken Word Club um that Bethel you know Bethel yeah yeah she was the she was the president at the time and then yeah and then she just like encouraged me to like you know say a poem and stuff and then yeah that's where like I actually started like you know going to more open mics and then from that people asking me to feature and then from that doing like other projects and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and then you know and then I became a lot of poetry Mm -hmm. um and then yeah so that's where that came from so it came from like I mean just like all the artistic stuff that I had inside me already mm-hmm. and then being here as well you know all the feelings and stuff I was having from being here as well mm-hmm. um that's where it came from so my parents of course were like you're gonna study kinesiology and then you're gonna apply to go to a physio school or something go work with your uncle mm-hmm. basically yeah. um uh but I was like mm, okay <laughs> and then but I basically had to prove to my parents that this was not only like something that I I liked to do, like enjoy to do, but also that it was a realistic source, a realistic um like profession. Or else it was it also is basically useless, right? So you can say like, oh you like this, and then they'll say, um, oh you can do it in your part time while you're being a physiotherapist or mm-hmm. a doctor. Mm-hmm. And um so but it wasn't until I started being successful in it. Like my parents are like supportive now. Like they've come to my shows and stuff like that. Um, but I had to prove that it was something worth like 
coming to or else mm-hmm. they'd be like you're basically wasting your time yeah. right so i think when it comes to like things like that art like because i feel like a lot it's also like a lot of like nigerians are like creative people okay mm-hmm. so problem solving needs creativity yeah. okay yeah. and i feel like they are like so many like creative people but because our way the way that we know how to survive is through being an engineer, a doctor and this, because even as black people, as African people, we have to prove our worth to the world. Mm-hmm. And so the best way to do that is to go into the hardest, highest earning professions. Yeah. And so now if you want to be an artist, you have to be so good yeah. that it compares to that. But even still now, mm-hmm. I still feel like it's still not as respected as being a doctor. Oh, you know, yeah. like you could, like I could, I could probably, I could get like, I don't know, a Grammy for spoken word. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a doctor, it doesn't matter. So it's like, they'll be like, you know, that's nice. That's great. We're proud of you. Mm-hmm. But it's like, could you not like, you know, be a doctor and a spoken word artist? Maybe, you yeah. know, there's still that, that little extra, like, oh, you could have done this. But it's like, you know, when I, when I was studying, I, you know, like, I, I don't really enjoy studying, but now doing what I do now, like, you know, like, with my business and poetry and stuff, like, I love to learn. I truly, mm-hmm. truly do. Like, I don't mind studying, but if I'm studying for something that I don't enjoy, it's like, why, problem, yeah. why am I doing that? It's that, it's that intrinsic motivation, mm-hmm. because if you don't have that, it's just going to seem like it's an obligation, something you have to do instead of something that you, you enjoy, enjoy doing. to do. Yeah. And because you enjoy it, you want to do it more. So for the people that love to study, love that for love you love that for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and i enjoy science i love the i love that that's fine mm-hmm. okay but i i don't feel the intrinsic motivation to study you know mm-hmm. the krebs cycle <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of my life i don't want to i don't want to okay <laughs> oh wow but but i mean that you know? that's valid though because like it's just a daily grind and and the beauty mm-hmm. of it um is it, it's an upward trajectory like in your experience mm-hmm. in your professionalism in your income mm-hmm. and all that is on an upward mm-hmm. trajectory so that's the beauty of of being an artist and like man ugh, that idea of proving to your parents almost like you owe them it's almost like they have mm-hmm. a stake in your education in a way yeah. so then if do. you if you want and they do exactly but mm-hmm. but the, if you now want to deviate from that you have to explain with the aid of a diagram and well, yeah and exactly. Um, gonna be? Yeah, why what is your plan what is your backup plan what's the backup backup plan like how do you exactly. how do you expect to survive in the world how do you expect so then there's a lot of like justifying they, they just have high hopes and they don't sometimes they don't see what you see right and i i know mm-hmm. that it comes from a place of love that like of course no exactly. no parent wants their child to like not make it not be successful and that like mm-hmm. nobody wants that for their kid right um mm-hmm. So, yeah, I completely get it. But at the same time, it's like, at the end of the day, I got to live my life and do and make choices I can live with, you know? Exactly. In the end, it's like, it's like when you, like, even my parents as well, like, sometimes I ask them, it's like, if you had the option to, you know, explore, explore life or do something else before, even if you got married or had kids, like, if you had the space or the support to do that or follow, like, another passion that wasn't just survival Mm -hmm. or money driven Mm -hmm. would you have done it like what would you have done and there's so many things that they would have done yeah and i'm just like so let me have that (laughs) let me have that then yeah because you like you said like you want me to have a better life than you i feel like that should also include making my own choices and what makes me happy because in the end like especially as a as an immigrant in this now different place like mm-hmm. you said like you have to make the best of this, your situation yeah you now have to find a different way of being happy that yeah. would have been easier at home mm-hmm. <laughs> but now you know different place mm-hmm. so you know you you have to figure that out yeah, and when adapt, i see people yeah. yeah and when i hear like people around me who like you know in their youth or You know, if there's people older than me, they say like, oh, I went to this place to study and I did this and I traveled here and I did that. And by the end, they got to come back to the home that they wanted to, Mm -hmm. which is just not the case for us. You know, like it's not like, oh, I'm just going to study. What is it? What is a gap year? What is a gap year? There's no going back. There's no going back. There's no going back. There's no taking a break. Exactly. Exactly. And it's so sad because when I think of like, like, you know, even all of our countries, you know, in Africa, it's like there's a reason why our countries are like that the way they are because of 
Western intervention. <laughs> okay, yeah, Western intervention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So it's like our our places, our home, you know, home countries weren't just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, and when people, I think the thing that really um, upsets me the most sometimes is if if I talk about you know missing home or any of those things. People just say things like, oh, just leave, or, um, but isn't Canada better, or isn't, like, the crime, like, they'll talk about crime or corruption. It's like, you know, there's crime and corruption in Canada, too. Like, like in fact, mad, it's on the rise. On a mad Like, thing. it's on the rise. Like, okay. yeah. You know, homelessness is on the rise. Like, all these things are on the rise. Mm-hmm. Drug use is on the, on the oh, rise. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, it's like, it's not, when people choose to live their, leave their home countries, that's not a, it's not an easy decision it's not just simple it's not a simple oh this is better this is worse it's like there are parts of home that are better than here and it's like there's parts of Canada that sure are better than like back home but the re the reasoning is because our countries like Canada and the US Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the UK and it's like even here in Canada you the government or the society doesn't even treat its own indigenous people well you know they're still suffering and you know it's and it's the settlers or the immigrants and now who like that's what canada is it's like the a country European of settlers, settlers and immigrants yeah and, yeah yeah exactly totally. and so it's like even this land that we're on doesn't reflect its true indigenous people either yeah so it's like you know your national <clears throat> your national sports hockey that you love so much it's an adapted indigenous sports <laughs> so i don't know which it's but the indigenous people can't play can't play hockey without having like racial slurs thrown at them like like, like little boys playing hockey yeah. they just boys playing hockey they get like slandered <laughs> like yeah. like racially slandered yeah. thing. so it's like it's like this place that's supposed to be better supposed to be safe if you if you if you criticize it if you talk about the place that you love and the ways that it's better than here then you get backlash because when i wrote this article on cbc about you know loneliness and those kinds of things mm-hmm. um i was just talking from my literally from my experience mm-hmm. you know because that's what i experienced yeah and the comment section was mad it was mad <laughs> it was mm-hmm. mad and the thing is for me i wasn't surprised but there was people also in the comments who were surprised by the negative backlash that i was that I was getting but it's like but this is my reality this is mm-hmm. like so many realities of so many other immigrants like you you criticize Canada or you say something better and about your place where you come from mm-hmm. and then they want to now they're defensive now they want to fight because of this 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 um this idea that they have that Canada is just it's just so much better and so I I always say like immigration is is trading a set of problems for a new set of problems for exactly a new and different set of problems there is no perfect place and you know I think what made me sad though was in in the comments there was this one person who said they were an immigrant and they said you're discouraging other immigrants from immigrating and I'm like I'm not discouraging anybody from immigrating but they also need to know the reality the reality of when they come here because it's oh not all gosh. sparkle and joy and glitter. Yes, yeah, not. Okay. Yeah. It is cold. <laughs> yeah. It can be unwelcoming. Yes. It can be lonely. It can mm-hmm. also be that. And thing is, and again, like we said, literally full circle at the beginning, we have to come here and then literally just Make try our best. For <laughs> we have to, you know, because if we don't, you'll end up being you'll end just you'll end up just being depressed, mm-hmm. anxious, yep. lonely, yeah. <laughs> frustrated. You don't know how to talk to anybody. You feel like no one wants to talk to you. Yeah. Um, people don't reflect you. Mm-hmm. There's all the stuff you can't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but you just have to assimilate. You just have to say like being Canadian is so much better, and that's it. Like I've never seen a place where people have bumper stickers that say "F the Prime Minister" like like in public, and everyone's just proud to just to be. Because I think it's important. I think it's important to be able to criticize your government. Oh, of course. But I feel like the way that it happens, especially now in the Western world, like it's people against people instead of the people against the government. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, okay, you support this person, you support this person, but we can't come together to try and make the whole thing good. In the end, it's the government against the people because the government is, are the ones that we elected to to lead us. But if it's just... They were just fighting each other like this liberal against conservative, this Democrat versus. I'm like, what are you talking about? 
we're all suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I find that honestly, I find that that's everywhere though, because like with the with mm-hmm. the election, for instance, that I ha- was it this year that it happened mm-hmm. in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Like the people supporting the two majority um party, I think it was PDP and APC, um, Obi versus Tunumbu, Omo. Mm-hmm. Those that (laughs) see the supporters from both like sides, Mm -hmm. like it it would get really heated at times. And that that election, I think that may have been the first election where like the you know the results were taken to court. Like, you know, and anyway, not to get too into politics because that's my least favorite least favorite topic, but like I know, but you're right though. Yeah, exactly right, because that's the same thing that happened in the West. So exactly who's better? There's no better, there's no worse. Because it's 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 happening everywhere. So you can't put yourself on this pedestal as an immigrant who has a Canadian passport now. I personally um, I even say this like when they when, in my bios as well, when they want to introduce me and I write in my bio Nigerian, South African um, I once had someone send me back like a proof to read and it, it, they added Canadian, they put Canadian first, they put Canadian, Nigerian, South African and I told them, take it out. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ask you, I, I didn't put myself, I didn't put Canadian in there yeah. because sure, like um, with citizenship, sure, I'm Canadian, but like when it comes to whether it's Canadian culture or the country or the, like I I can't identify with any of it because everything that I brought to this country had nothing to do with Canada. All the things that people know me for that Mm -hmm. like people that like, like me for these parts of my personality, Mm -hmm. it, none none of it was given to me by Canada, Canada. you know? Yeah. For me, I just, I find that like, me in my bio it's the same thing i'm a nigerian mm-hmm. based in canada and like based based exactly yeah because like for me being nigerian is is my identity like that's a gigantic mm-hmm. part of who i am it's part of the way i see the world the stories i tell the way i understand the world and being a canadian in canada is mm-hmm. is another layer to that right mm-hmm. because now you're in another space having to you're you're mm-hmm. from one identity, one social, one society, one mm-hmm. culture in another, mm-hmm. trying to adapt, live, and make the best of it. Yeah. Right? Also get the benefits, and also get the benefits, you can't get and also being Canadian, exactly, and also <laughs> the grants as well. Yeah, the grants you can't travel as much without you know the passport you have. You don't need to apply for for visas for a lot of places when you have the passports. You there are definitely mm-hmm. benefits, right? As with mm-hmm. any society, truly. Um, but but I think with the idea of identity like Mm -hmm. i i hear what you're saying for sure yeah but um this has been awesome aditola thank you so much (laughs) for sharing for sharing (laughs) for sharing for sharing um can you just leave us with a sprinkle of wisdom just a little whether it's an african proverb whether it's from you know your culture in south africa (laughs) you know whatever it is just leave us with a piece of advice to just for us to take with us Let's see. I don't know if they're like African proverbs or or anything like that, but I think one of the sayings I really enjoy um, that came out from South Africa is, you know, we move. We move forward. <laughs> we oh, move. What, is that from South Africa? <laughs> I don't know. Because like, we know. in Nigeria, we want, we move. <laughs> like, <laughs> we also say it. We also, I don't know where it originated from, but Nigeria yeah, I don't think say so. it as yeah, well. But I feel, like, I feel like the first time I, I heard it was like, you know, back home. So I was just like... Yeah. So I think, I think it's important to, uh, like you said, like no matter where you are, make the best out of the situation. Mm-hmm. And so I think for me, like after being here and all like the things that I experienced after being here, I I had to make sure that while I am here, I'm not confused or I'm not trying to um, change who I am mm-hmm. and I know where I come from because in the end, that's what brings value into places like Canada and the US mm-hmm. and the UK so it's like we have to just remember who we are and in the end just being in Canada or being Canadian doesn't have to suddenly erase, erase your everything background. that you are yeah you know yeah so yeah that is my final <laughs> my final <laughs> thoughts <laughs> never forget where you are where you come from never forget your heritage never forget who you are and like never stop striving for better even in new spaces that you find yourself thank mm-hmm. you so much yeah. so please tell the people where they can find you a little bit about your business what <laughs> you know let's just put that plug in real quick um okay so by poetry it is a lot of poetry on instagram mm-hmm. uh if you search it you'll see me at the top yeah. 
Um, my website for my poetry is also a lot of poetry.com. Um, if you're an artist and you're interested in some branding, some websites, some business advice, um, that is poetic designers on Instagram and poetic designing.com for my website that I designed and built myself, both of them. And yeah, that is where, that's where I'm at. I'm not on Twitter X. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> neither am i it's too much nah. <laughs> it's too much uh, but yeah just instagram and instagram and my websites and that is it okay fantastic thank you again aditola for being here and for sharing you know your story your experiences your heart with us i'm just i appreciate you oh thank you sir i appreciate you and thank you for just like having this podcast like i always love to see um i just i just love to see i love to see it you know i love to see like other beautiful amazing african people just doing their thing and creating the spaces just have people to just you know speak their truth and tell their story and also hear more about your story i think i learned so much about you today (laughs) no you're actually so amazing and so inspiring i hope we can also work together in the future in some other capacity let's make it happen you know we don't know what it's gonna be yeah but Oh, yeah. Let's make it happen. Awesome. Thank you again. And to our listeners, we'll see you. Thank you all. Next time. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>Thank you for joining us on this episode of Afros in the Diaspora. I hope this episode left you feeling inspired and hopeful. To engage, feel free to like, follow, share, and subscribe to Afros in the Diaspora on all social media and podcast platforms. Remember to leave a review and a rating. If you would like to be a guest, please reach out. Send an email to hi at afrosinthediaspora.com. That is hi at afrosinthediaspora.com. Or send us a DM on Instagram at afrosinthediaspora. Remember, there is beauty in our stories and power in our voices. Together, we are stronger. Until next time.